Okay, do you want to hear some nice sounding fluff or do you want brutally honest trading advice that can actually help you? In this video, our head of trader development shares his advice he wishes he knew when he was a struggling trader. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City since 2005, and now Miami as well, and proud to develop number seven and even eight figure per year traders. Watch, take notes, and learn from a pro SMB trader so you can grow your trading account. So somebody asked me this the other day. If I could go back in time and give myself one piece of advice as a new trader, what would it be? I would give myself this one piece of advice, but it's probably not what you think. So most beginners, I think, focus on the wrong things. I certainly did when I was a beginner. I chased the hottest strategies. I certainly overthought my mindset and its relation to trading. And I burned through too much cash without even realizing why I was losing. This is right when I started my trading. So we know this because we see it over and over and over again. But what if we talked about a better way, a, a way that most traders overlook, especially early in their career? By the end of this video, you're going to learn the hard truths that I wish I'd known when I was starting out. Truths that would have saved me thousands of dollars and probably years of frustration. And trust me, these aren't the tips you hear about on social media or in trading forums. You'll get real, actionable advice, really three distinct steps that could change your trading journey today. Stick around because the third piece of advice might just be the one thing holding you back from your real success. Step one, start with edge. You want to categorize trades that have edge. Here's another hard truth. Trading psychology isn't your biggest problem when you're just starting out. Sure, it matters down the road, and as you progress in your trading, it will become more important to you. But in the beginning, you need to focus on something else. You need to focus on your trading edge. Developing traders, especially those starting out, waste too much time thinking about their mindset when they haven't even built a strategy or a collection of strategies that work. So first, you want to find the trades that actually make money. Then you can worry about your psychology. So what we encourage traders to do and what we have traders do on our desk is not go and reinvent the wheel. There are thousands of traders making millions of dollars a year trading. Think about that. There are thousands of traders out there making millions of dollars a year trading. So what separates them from you? It's not the psychology at first, it's the edge they have and the way they use that trading edge early in their development. So we were just down in Miami and the new SMB office opened there and we had a great dinner at an amazing sushi restaurant. The chef who opened the restaurant had trained under two different sushi masters. He didn't train under a pit master or a grill master, he trained with sushi masters. He learned and used the tools of those who were already doing what he wanted to do. He learned their edges, he learned their tools, how they use their tools, and then he went out and came up with some slight adjustments on his own, but he learned their edges first, and he understood the edges that they have and the tools that they use and the reason for that edge, and he got great at those edges first. All the trades that have edge have a reason for that edge. Find the reason, not just the trade. All the great traders out there have reasons why they look for the trades that they look for. All the great trades out there have reasons why they work. They aren't just random patterns or setups. They're backed by a real reason that gives them edge. So instead of hunting for specific trades, looking for consolidations, looking for a wedge pattern, oh, look, that wedge broke, it should work. Start asking yourself, why does that trade exist? What market behavior or market inefficiency is that trade exploiting? The best way we see it is learn from those you are learning from. Learn the edges you are studying. Why does that trade have edge? What is the edge and why does it have edge? When you understand that, you can find more of those trades and you can improve your chances of success. So worry about learning your edge first. Let the other things come later. The second step, you wanna focus on the categories of trades that you are taking. So now we have edge. We have some edge or at least an awareness of what edge is. So let's ground ourselves in the math real traders use. So if you have 120 trades a month, that's six trades a day. 
So the question is, how many A trades does an average trader get in a month? Forget A plus trades, maybe we get one of those a month, but how many A, a trades does an average trader get in a month? How many B trades does an average trader get in a month? How many C trades does an average trader get in a month? So out of that 120 trades, it's not surprising to us to see a trader get 20 A trades a month. You will get about 40 B trades a month. Then you will have about 60 C trades a month. Let's assume that we're not taking the bad trades, but 120 trades that we can categorize into A, B, or C. You will get 20 A trades, 40 B trades, and 60 C trades. We vary our risk based on the quality of the trade. I was just on the desk, we were talking about a trade setup, and we were saying, if this happens, it's an A. Right now, it's a B. If this variable goes away, it's a C. So once we have edge, we're easily able to delineate, is this an A trade, a B trade, or a C trade? Because we understand why that trade has edge. So then we can look for the variables associated with that trade. And then we have that expectation that we'll only get about 20 of those a month, so we better make those A trades count. We'll get about 40 B trades a month. We wanna make those count, but we're not gonna put as much risk on those. We're gonna get about 60 C trades a month. A trades and B trades and C trades all look a little different. On their core, they might look similar, but the variables involved in that trade, those contributing factors to that edge are most present in A trades. They're a little less present in B trades and they're a little less present in C trades. If you're struggling to figure out what A, B and C trades are, you can check out this video we did and you can pay attention to the challenge at the end because that challenge will help you quickly identify what A, B, and C trades are for you. So a key note is if you're trying to figure out how to score the probabilities of each trade, we can take a very simple process. You can go and get 20 examples of any single trade. They all have to be the exact same trade, but take 20 examples of them. Just 20 of those trades that have edge. With that, you find the best version, the best version with all the variables there. That is your A version. Now find the absolute worst version. That is your F version. Now you have a scale. You have the best version and you have the worst version. They have to be the same trade, but you have the best version and the worst version. And then you can go back through those 20 and very quickly categorize A, B, C. Anything that's less than a C, don't touch. Forget about that. If you're developing early as a trader, anything that's less than a B, you might even pass on. You might just watch it and then let it pass by. Everything by definition has to fall between that best and the worst. So once you have that, you can scope where everything else falls on that scale. Every example you have needs to fall on that scale somewhere. Those variables involved in your A trade, your B trade, and your C trade give you the probabilities that you can start to apply into your trades. So let's jump into a secret of most traders that become successful. C trades and B trades are repetitive. They're sometimes boring, but they should constantly make you money. For us on the desk and for most traders, trading is really exciting when you actually get A setups and A trades. But between it, you're basically just stacking bricks. You're building solid trading th skills through getting really good and consistent at executing C and B trades. It's infinitely easier to execute your plan in an A trade when you're executing the C trades and the B trades consistently. We asked our risk manager if successful traders are offered a different skew of these opportunities. Like are successful traders offered more A, B, and C trades than unsuccessful traders? His answer was astounding and he said no. The difference was the very successful traders on our desk and the very successful traders that we've seen typically will take C trades with much, much, much smaller size than B trade and then take those A trades with real size. So it may look like their skew is crazy when their P&L comes down. It might be that a successful trader has most of their P&L made by two or three trades per month. Those A trades that work out and turn into A plus trades might make so much of their month in their P&L, but they're still taking those B and C trades. 
They're still building that baseline. They're laying those bricks, those boring, repetitive things. They're focused on executing those as consistently as they can. They're doing the same amount of prep for those A, B, and C trades. They're focusing for the same entry signal on each of those trades, but they're identifying the different variables and they're respecting is this A, B, or C trade. Step three, this leads us into trade sizing. So now that you know the categories of your trade, let's talk about how much risk to take on each of these categories. This is where a risk sizing scorecard comes in. For A trades, you wanna risk more, typically about 30% of your daily stop or more, depending on your comfort level and account size. If you have a problem with risking that much, you need to be very careful with the risk allocated to your B or C trades. If you're uncomfortable risking 30% in your A trades, and then you're comfortable risking 15% of your daily stop in your B trades, you're probably actually going to undersize your A trade and oversize your B trade. So you want to find where your comfort level is and adjust your, your risk sizing appropriately. But in general, A trades get 30% of a daily stop or more depending on some of the variables. For B trades, you're looking around 10 to 15% of a daily stop. So the max is about 15%. And for C trades, ideally less than 5% of a daily stop. The goal here is simple. It's to put more capital into the trades with the best edge and reduce risk where the edge is weaker. If we break the math out, we can assume a 10K, $10,000 daily stop. So on an A trade, you're risking 3K. On a B trade, you're risking 1K. On a C trade, you're risking 500 bucks, right? What we really want people getting super comfortable with is the idea that a B trade is where most people make their baseline money each month. And an A trade is actually something really special. It's something that's a totally different business for them. An A plus trade is super special. And both A and A plus trades need to be bet much, much bigger than a B trade. But even consistent trading with just those B and C trades will help you put up a solid P&L month. But if you're inappropriately and over betting on taking your C trades, you might be churning your wheels too much. And as a result, you're even more unlikely to size up the B trades. And then even worse, you're very unlikely to size up the A trades, those trades that are really gonna move the PL. But those are a separate business. Those are thought of as, these are the big opportunities. I'm prepping for these every single day through my B and C trades. But when I get those A trades, I wanna be betting appropriately. So remember, be very aware of how much risk you're giving the C trade. So this is so important, we actually went out and put together a cheat sheet that breaks this down into a clear risk scorecard. You can go and grab the link, and what's important and what's astounding is that more people haven't done this with their trading. You can take that scorecard, you can print it out, and you can just check or track where those trades fall, A, B, C, and write out or note out how much risk you're applying when you're putting the trade on. Now the key to all of this, we're talking about growing your confidence early on in your trading career. You really want to focus and get really, really good at your B trades. If you're still developing as a trader, one of the best ways to build confidence and grow faster is by cutting out anything that's less than a C trade but focusing on being prepared and taking more of the B trades with solid setups as they show up for you. The more B trades you take, the more experience you'll gain, and the more confident you'll become in spotting and executing those A trades when they come along. So now you know how to categorize your trades. You have a tool to help you understand how much to risk on each one and track how much you are actually risking. But this is just the beginning. If you wanna dive deeper into this system and learn how to find A trades with real edge, how to find more really good trades that actually have real edge, you can go ahead and join our free trading webinar. You'll also get access to the risk sizing scorecard that we talked about, bring that with you, and you'll get cheat sheets. I think there are five cheat sheets of actual trades with real edge that you can download and keep for yourself. Click on the link below to register. Don't miss out.